Hey guys, this is Ukum the Crossroads in, and welcome to the Warcraft lore video. In this video, we'll be going over how powerful the Lich King is, which will basically include his powers, abilities, armaments, and a few logical assumptions. We'll specifically focus on Arthas Manithel as the Lich King, although most of his power and strength apply for other Lich Kings as well. Todd, the other lore master, will be narrating this video, so just sit back and enjoy another tale from the Crossroads. Both the Lich King's weapon and armor were crafted by the Dreadlords, also known as the Nethrozim, and have powerful magical properties. The body armor is called the Plate of the Damned, and it covers most of the body, yet it rests lightly upon the wearer. The first Lich King Nurzul's spirit is bound within the Plates of the Damned, and when Arthas placed the Helm of Domination on his head, he merged with the spirit of Nurzul. The Lich King's armor would also, if damaged, magically repair itself in an instant and was nearly invulnerable. Eventually Arthas as the Lich King consumed her soul's spirit and ruled as the Lich King alone as well as destroyed all the goodness that was in him. The crown of the Lich King, which is known as the Helm of Domination when put on the user's head, gives him the powers of the Lich King and turns him into the Jailer of the Damned. The helm is what controls the undead scourge and forces them to obey the wearer's will. If the helm is put on one's head when the previous Lich King is still alive, it will kill the user by surging overflow of power. Only divine beings are not slain, but they still cannot command his powers if the Lich King is alive. It is said that Frostmourne, the Lich King's fearsome rune-inscripted two-handed longsword, was the true jailer of the damned and lord of the scourge, since Arthas' soul was consumed by it and he was controlled by it at first. The Lich King is able to wield Frostmourne effortlessly despite its size and weight, as well as slice through most opponents with minimal resistance. It would also shatter almost any weapon it came into contact with, as well as take the opponent's souls into itself. Frostmourne has the ability to drain the life from its victims, as well as drain the soul of its user, the first one being Arthas. Before he became the Lich King himself and served Nerzul, Arthas could hear the Lich King talking to him telepathically through the blade, which was possible at any plane or any distance. Frostmourne would corrupt the wielder over time, and any individual that wields it will not part with it willingly. Over time, the person will go from good to neutral and finally to evil. It is the same principle as with the One Ring of Power of Sauron. It simply cannot be used for good, even though the wearer wants to. After the wielder becomes evil, he will then become undead, after which the blade finally completely takes over the soul. The Lich King sometimes kept Frostmourne in the Halls of Reflection, where he was able to see all the souls that had taken, including his father's, as well as Uther the Lightbringers, which were all trapped inside the Rune Blade. Look now to your defenses, my son, for the champions of justice gather at your gates! Arthas Menethil as the Lich King wielded immense power, although it is uncertain where most of his powers and abilities specifically came from and whether they were simply the result of him being the most powerful Death Knight that wielded the legendary Frostmourne that merged with the Lich King and took on his armor. As an undead, the Lich King felt absolutely nothing, especially due to his very soul being taken by his cursed blade. When he took on the Helm of Domination, he took out his own heart, believing that anything that made him at all mortal made him weak. The Lich King intended to rule forever, as he was immortal due to his undeath and his incredible powers granted by Frostmourne and the Helm of Domination. Since Arthas was first a Death Knight and the most powerful one, he most likely retained all of his Death Knight powers when becoming the Lich King, although they were enhanced hundredfold due to gaining the powers of the Jailer of the Damned. This means that whatever the Death Knights can do and whatever they feel, their master does it and feels it on a much higher scale. Just like the Death Knights, the Lich King was capable of spreading infections and diseases onto his enemies, as well as use dark magic to heal himself, such as when he was wounded by the Blood of the Forsaken at the Angathar Wrathgate. He also used runic magic, which employs sigils and symbols that hold magical power. His runic magic could most likely access the Void, the Fell, and Arcane magic, but most of all death magic that necromancers use, as well as Frost and Blood. Without a doubt, the Lich King is one of the most powerful necromancers in all of Azeroth, if not the most powerful. He is able to use his unholy power to raise armies of Fundead that will follow his every command, as well as grant power to his most obedient and loyal servants. 
hands. His undead scourge acted like a hive mind, telepathically receiving his every command. He personally went out into the frozen wastes of Ice Crown to resurrect the mighty aspect of the blue dragonflight Sindragosa with Frostmourne, making her one of the most powerful undead. The Lich King, like all types of necromancers, was the enemy of life itself and one of the greatest evils the people of Azeroth have ever faced. For every living being that is slain by the Lich King or his minions, another foot soldier is added into his unending undead army. Even though he is undead himself, it appears that his position and power keep him from rotting away unlike the rest of the undead of Azeroth. That implies that serious magic is being used by him. Just like the Death Knights, he commands the frost in his veins that freezes his enemies' hearts and minds, and not to mention freezes them completely. He is shown to have extreme mastery over ice, being able to bend it to his will, as well as it being nearly indestructible. A good example of this is when he froze the Champion of the Light, Tyrion Fordrink, who wielded the legendary Ashbringer. This was an incredible feat due to the power of the Holy Light being the biggest weakness of the practitioners of necromancy and the undead. The Lich King could fire an energy-based attack out of Frostborn called Death Coil that would drain his enemy's life energy as well as destroy their internal organs in a single hit. He was also a practitioner of training life out of his enemies, which empowered his abilities and strengthened him. The Lich King generated an aura that would strengthen the undead in his presence, thanks to which they would be faster and stronger. If ever being wounded, he can sacrifice one of his undead minions and transfer its undeath into dark healing energy to heal a great amount of his wounds. The Lich King could also use blood magic just like his death knights with which he could sustain himself in combat as well as boil the blood of his enemies. When the Argent Crusade and the Knights of the Ebon Blade launched their final assaults onto Ice Crown Citadel alongside the most powerful adventurers on Azeroth, the Lich King tested their strengths for a while until he killed all of them in one single blow with Frostmourne. In the end, his downfall would be by the hands of Tyrion Fordrink, who thanks to the power of the Holy Light, countered Arthas' darkness and shattered Frostmourne with the Ashbringer, thus releasing all the souls that it had stolen. After this, the greatest fighting force, as the Lich King called them, was resurrected by the spirit of Arthas' father, King Terranus, and together they all managed to finally kill the Lich King. He is, and always will be, one of the greatest threats the people of Azeroth had ever faced, as well as by our opinion, one of the greatest Warcraft villains of all time. Anyway guys, this is it on the video and we hope you enjoyed it and if you did, be sure to check out our other videos and subscribe. If you're interested in Warcraft, Lord of the Rings slash Hobbit, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Witcher, Game of Thrones and other fancy franchise based lore, stay tuned for more videos like this one. If you're by any chance into LEGO reviews and Star Wars lore videos, check out our main channel The Scoundrels Cantina, the link for it will be in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and remember, no matter how lost you are, the innkeeper will always show you the path. See you guys in another video.